Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this guy right here, Plums from Matthias Kramer and Crash of Games. Also, Pegasus Spiel uh, was in on this production as well. So that is that. It's a trick-taking game where you are trying to produce a bunch of different mixes of fruit to score the most points. Uh, you only have three rounds to do that and either five or six tricks on each round. So you are very limited on time. So you have to really be able to put those combinations together quickly and efficiently. Let me get down to the table and I'll show you. In the game of plums, the game consists of three rounds in which six tricks are played, five in a five player game. And uh, the point is to score the most points by getting fruit mixes to fire at the right time and, and stuff like that. So you'll understand that in just a moment. The general gist is to get the most points. The first person is the player who ate fruits last, and so they will take the first uh, turn. In a turn, all you're simply doing is playing a card face up from your hand. Each player will in turn follow, follow that action. And then the highest numbered card gets to pick first. So in this case, the 18 is the highest, the 17 is the second highest, third, and then fourth. All right, so on the cards is a kind of fruit which you're going to be using to make different kinds of fruit mixes. Now when a fruit mix card comes up, it'll look similar to this where it has a mix combination up here and then how many points that mix combination will score you at the end of the game. So for example, this is it looking for two pairs of the kinds of fruit and this is where the kinds of fruit are shown. And this is how many points it will be giving you at the end of the game if you make that fruit combination. So the person who played the highest card gets first choice among the cards played. They can either take their card back or one of the other cards played by one of their opponents. Now there are also special cards that have special actions on them. For example, the watchdog there, it gets, lets you take this card right here, which means that nobody can steal cards from you while you have this card in front of you. There are also cards that have uh, pie symbols, three of them to be exact, on them, like so. And what that means is you get to take three pie cards, which are shown right here. These cards are specific because you can add any number of those when you play a card out to the front. You can add any number of these to that card to raise the value of the card. So if I had played two of these pie cards with the 12, I would actually have the higher number because 12 plus 6.28 is 18.28, which is higher than this 18 over here. So pie cards are useful during the course of the game. There are also, uh, a, there's also a card that shows this symbol right here. And that means that you can take a card from a, an opponent that is face down in their tableau, which is important because that card could be some a card that they're using to finish one of their fruit mixes. You could use that card to finish one of your fruit mixes. So stealing a card is important, which is why having the watchdog is also important. So in this uh, situation, uh, number one player will probably take the 17 so that they can then place the watchdog in their area, which means that no one can steal from them. The rest of these, not having any special actions or anything like that, at this point in the game, won't mean too terribly much. But um, we'll take this one, that one will take that one, and then that one will be over there. The turn order cards come back into play. Now the person who took the last card also gets a plum card. Plum cards are useful because they are wilds to help finish uh, the different fruit mixes that will be coming up. So we have 
these cards out here. The first person goes first, and then second, third, and fourth. Okay, once cards have been played, the numbers are switched. So what I think we will do is we will go ahead and take this card and add it to our tableau. Now, as you can see here, this is a fruit mix card. We just took it. It wants three cards, but they each have to be different. So if I look at my tableau right now, I have a cherry, a wild, and a berry. So I have three different ones. I can use this, flip it over, and then these two are taken out of the game. And now I have scored points for the end of the, of the game. Every time you take a fruit card from a trick, you can create one or more fruit mixes by taking the, the required fruits that are there and using them. At the end of the game, generally speaking, you can finish any fruit mixes that you have left after the game is over, but generally speaking, you can play fruit mixes at any point during your turn whenever you take a fruit card. And then that is how the game is played over three rounds. Again, uh, noting that the first round is played out until all of these cards are done. Then the second uh, deck is used until all of those cards are done. And then the third round is used. And then all of these cards that have been scored are flipped over and tabulated. Whoever has the most points is the winner. Now there are a couple of variations. Uh, one being that you can only make one fruit mix per trick, um, which makes it a little bit more difficult to score tricks. Sometimes you are able to make more than one fruit mix on a trick. So um, that gives you a little bit more decision-making process. The other variant is that at the end of the game, instead of being able to um, finish any fruit mixes that you may have done, you cannot finish any fruit mixes at the end of the game, which makes the decision-making process on when to finish fruit mixes even more excruciating. So uh, there are those two variants to make it a little bit more of a gamer game. Uh, otherwise, it is a pretty straightforward trick-taking game and uh, with a cool twist on it. So here are my final thoughts. So that is Plums, uh, a trick-taking game that I'm pretty much on board with now that's saying a lot because usually with trick-taking games, I'm somewhat of a purist. I don't want to get too far away from the whole idea of a trick-taking game where you have a hand of cards, you're playing one card from your hand and you can kind of keep an eye on what everybody else is playing to give you an idea of what everybody else has in their hands based on what you have in your hand and what they've been playing. I like those kinds of trick-taking games. And if you step too far off the reservation, so to speak, and you start adding in all these different mechanics that kind of make it into or morph it into another game, I'm not too much of a fan of that. But with Plums, I think it stays in that confine of what I would consider a true trick-taking game. Now, that's not to say that there aren't other elements thrown in there to kind of spice it up a bit, because there are, but at the same time, it feels like you're playing a trick-taking game, not some kind of amalgamation of trick-taking and a whole bunch of other things. Now, with Plums, I like the fact that the person who plays the highest card goes first. On top of that, you can play pie cards that will change the value of your card so that somebody might play a very high card and think that they're going to be able to choose first, but then you're able to play pie cards and add it to your card and actually become the first player. I like that little twist because it always um, throws into um, wonderment Am I going to be able to go to choose first or not? I do enjoy that mechanic of the game. Furthermore, making the different fruit mixes was a cool thing. It's almost like a poker variant on a trick taking game where you're taking two pair or three pair and you're, you're taking a full house or 
uh, four of a kind or what have you, and you're scoring points based on those cards that you have taken in this round and previous rounds. So I really did enjoy that as well. Um, on top of that, I also liked the different power cards that you can fire when you choose that card from the lot. Um, you know, having the watchdog that uh, saves your cards from being stolen from, the one that actually allows you to steal cards, and then the one that lets you take three pie cards. Those were all very cool um, powers, and they were also useful powers. Sometimes you'll find games that have very useless or just kind of ho-hum powers in them. These were cool, and uh, they were also useful. So. Really, as a trick-taking game, this gets two thumbs up from me because it really fires on all of those pistons where you are trying to, uh, of course, get the most points, um, like many trick-taking games. Sometimes it's the fewest number of points and what have you, but uh, it has the feel of a trick-taking game. I think this is going to be one that we gamers are going to be able to take and use with other people who enjoy card taking or trick taking games and be able to provide somewhat of a gateway into our little niche hobby. So uh, with that being said, two thumbs way up for plums from me. Now this is of course a reprint from um, what is it called? P Mal or Pi Mal Flaumen or something to that effect. So it has already been available but this production is actually really nice. I love the artwork. It's kind of a scientific um, artistic impression of different kinds of fruit um, and I thought it was I didn't know I didn't think I was going to be that um, enthralled with it but it actually is very cool very uh, pleasant to the eye um, I like how uh, it it's kind of reviving that old style of artwork and so I I enjoyed it so that gets a big thumb up for me as well so that is plums from crash of games and Pegasus spiel We'll see you on the flip side, folks.